Okay, let's make a chunky flat granny square. This is really easy. I'm making it with Bernat Forever Fleece Super Bulky six, six Weight Yarn. I find this to be the softest and easiest to work with uh, in the Super Bulky Weight Yarn. This is the color Rose Hip. It's going to end up being part of a blanket that I'm making and the pattern will be on here pretty soon this is a 10 inch square made with one two three four five rounds i'll show you how big it is at the end of each round because you can make it smaller for sure you could go ahead and make it bigger than this as well it just keeps going it's the way that i learned how to make it it doesn't leave any big holes in the corners they're all pretty equal all right, let's get started. You are going to make a magic ring. I know some people run screaming from the room <laughs> when they hear that, but it's not that hard. Here's how I do it. I take two fingers. You could do it on your four fingers if you want to. Most important thing is to just leave your pretty good sized tail down here. Bring your working yarn around, cross it over. You have an X. I'm using a 10 millimeter crochet hook. Go under the first part of the X, over the next one, bring it through, and just kind of twist it a little bit. Now grab that with your fingers, just kind of hold onto it because you're going to make a chain. Get your working yarn, switch fingers there. Got this loop. You can tighten that up in just a minute. Don't worry about it. Bring that through. And now you can, oops, sorry. Now you can tighten it up. Make sure I'm still in the camera view. Sorry about that. The most important thing to remember when you're working in a magic circle is to go under both the circle and the tail. The tail is what allows you to bring that in and tighten it up later. All right, so we're going to start chain four. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to make three double crochet. This is going to count as your first double crochet and a chain two for a corner. Yarn over, go into your circle, yarn over, pull through, you have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last two, and there's your double crochet. This is going to be a corner. I'm going to move my camera a little bit closer. Let's try that. So you can see the stitches clearly. We're going to make two more double crochet. Three for three total. Yarn over. Make sure you're going under the circle and the tail. Get your yarn. Bring it through. Three loops on your hook. Yarn over. Pull through two. Yarn over. Pull through the last two loops. Now you have two double crochet. We need one more. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. That's going to be your first side of your square. It's funny because we work in rounds, but it's a square. Chain two. This is going to be a corner. You have to have corners when you have squares. If your circle keeps getting bigger like mine does, because I tend to pull on it, let's pull that in a little bit. All right, so we have three, double crochet, and a chain two. 
we're going to do another three double crochet. One, this is a new hook that's a little stiff. Two, and three. This is going to be our next side. So you have a side, a corner, a side. We need another corner. Chain two. That makes your corner. And pull that in a little bit more. The whole time, make sure you're going under. If you're not sure, pull on this. It should pull the whole circle tighter. If it doesn't, then you know you've uh, somehow not gone under. All right, this is our next corner. We need three more double crochet for our next side. One. Two. And. Oops, I almost caught the tail in there. Three. Let me pull it just to make sure I'm still on track. Yes, it still works. And another corner. Now let's check and see how many sides we have. One, two, three. We're on our last side. This is going to count as our third double crochet, so we only need two more. That's also our corner. So we don't need a chain two on this one, just two double crochet. One and two. Now we are going to join at the third chain. So you can either count up. Sometimes I have trouble finding my first one. One, two, three. What I usually do is I don't want to go into this one because that's the top of my double crochet. This is actually my fourth chain, so I don't want to go into that one. I want to go into this one. That's the third. Sometimes as you go along, you know what? I'm going to show you something to have a smaller hook on hand, just in case this is a little bit hard to come through. And pull it through. Just makes your life easier. And slip stitch. Okay, see how it looks like a double crochet and you're going to pull this tight. Just pull, 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 pull. We'll weep that in later so that it doesn't come apart. All right, there's your first round. Three double crochet on each side. And we did it joined with a slip stitch. Now you're going to go into that corner under the chain space. Pull your yarn through, make another slip stitch, pull it tight, and chain four. One, two, three, and four. I did want to show you as each round progresses how big this is. It's approximately two inches. All right, we're going to work into this corner. This is where it can get a little confusing, but this is also what makes it um, where the corners are nice and even and uh, you don't end up with a big gaping hole. This is actually, every corner is going to get two double crochet, chain two, and another two double crochet, except here we're going to start. This is one of our double crochet. When we come all the way around, we're actually going to make what would have been our first one. So this is our double crochet and our chains. So we need two more. It's going to make sense to you in a little while. I promise. Two more double crochet for our corner. This is the only one that's different like that. Now you're going to go into the top of each double crochet across. Now we have three. You'll want to pull that double crochet from the corner over because this can very often hide on you. I'm going to go right into that with a double crochet. So one, two, 
two and three. Let's turn it. There's your corner. Every corner gets two double crochet and then a chain two and another two double crochet. So there's one double crochet, two, double crochet, chain two, one, two, and another two double crochet, one, and two. And see how that first double crochet can get hidden? Pull that over and it opens it right up for you. You should have three. Everything needs to stay even because it is a square. All the sides have to be the same. Try to keep your stitches as equal as you can. So double crochet into each of those three. So we have three double crochet. Those are our three. We've added two because that was our corner. So when we come back around on our next round, we're going to have more double crochet to work into. All right, we've reached our corner. Make sure you're going under that chain. Two double crochet, one. Two. Chain two. I'm going to return that a bit. And two double crochet. One and two. There's your three double crochet from the previous round. Pull that over, open it up. And you'll have three double crochet to work into one two and three double crochet. There's another corner, two double crochet, a chain two and two double crochet every corner. I know that first one looked weird, but it will end up being the equivalent of two double crochet, chain two and two double crochet, chain two. And another two double crochet. It grows very quickly with this super bulky six weight yarn. All right, pull that over so you have you can see your first you still have three double crochet. It's very easy to lose that first one. One. two, and three. This is where it's a little different. You have to remember every time you get back to this initial corner, this counted as one of our double crochet and our chain space, and this counted as our other two, so we're missing one. So every time you come back around, you're going to add it in this same corner. Go into that corner space with a double crochet. So that's actually the first double crochet of that corner from the previous round. And as I said, you can count up from the bottom or do what I do. I just keep telling myself, not this one because that's a double crochet. Not that one, because that's the fourth chain. This one. I want the third chain. And I am just going to go ahead and use my smaller hook. Make my life easy. Pull through for a slip stitch. Go back into that corner under the chain for another slip stitch. Tighten it up. Chain four. One, two, three, Okay. Now, let's see how big it is with two rounds. It's uh, a little over 
about four and a half, close to five inches. So if you want to make something with that size of a square, you can stop here. We're going to continue. Now, remember that was one of our double crochet and the chain space. When we come back around, we'll make the other one. So we still need two more double crochet in that corner space. One, and two. Grab some more yarn. Now, it keeps increasing by four every round because you're adding two from the corner from the previous round and two from this corner from the previous round. So you're always adding four so we had three to begin with, we're adding four. So now we have seven double crochets to work into. Remember to pull this over so you can open up that first double crochet. So you should have seven. If you don't, something's wrong. One. Two. Three. Four, five, over there, six, seven. Okay, you've reached your corner. Two double crochet chain two and two double crochet. So there's one double crochet, two, chain two, and another two double crochet. One, two. Remember if I'm going to slowly for you, fast forward, if I'm going too fast, pause, pull that over because look that one wanted to hide. Should have seven. Let's see if we do. Hopefully, one, two, oops, three, mm -hmm. four, five. six and seven. We've reached our next corner. Two double crochet, one, two, chain two, one, two, two double crochet, one, two. Try to make sure your chains aren't terribly loose because you want to have all, as best you can, have them all even. It'll help keep it nice and flat and straight. All right, make sure you pull that one over. Find your first double crochet to go into. We'll have another seven. One. Two. Three, four, five, six, and seven. There's your corner. Two double crochet into the corner. Make sure you're going underneath that chain space. One. Two double crochet, chain two, and two double crochet. Is 
just kind of always check when you're at your corner to make sure you've included two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. It's easy to forget. Um, sometimes I've found myself making two and uh, getting in a hurry and moving on along. And then, of course, you don't have the right number of double crochets for the next round. Okay, pull that over. Seven more. One. two, three, <laughs> four, five, six, and seven you're working into that um, double crochet that we worked into the corner from the previous round so that's the top of it right there don't think you're doing anything wrong it's a little bit tighter here's where it's easy to forget you have to make your double crochet into this corner to complete the first corner of this round. You can uh, forget that easily and then join into this chain and then when you come all the way back around realize that you're one stitch off. How do I know this? Because I've done it. I'm just trying to help you to learn from my mistakes. Okay, so I don't want to go into the double crochet. I don't want to go into my fourth chain. I want to go into my third chain. You don't have to use a smaller hook. I just find it easier. And I'm not stretching that out. All right, this is another place where you can forget there's a slip stitch and a second slip stitch by going under that chain make your second slip stitch pull that tight <clears throat> excuse me all this talking chain four one two three and four now let's see how big we are now we have one two three rounds and we're at about seven inches All right. Now we had seven in the last round, seven double crochets to work into, but we're adding four, two from each of our corners. So seven plus four is 11. That's how many double crochets we should have to work into. All right. There's your first double crochet and chain. We still have to make the rest of our corner. One. Two. I know this part can be confusing, but it really does help make a really nice even square. All right, pull that over so that you can make sure you find your first double crochet. Again, you can fast forward through all this. We'll be making one more round after this and doing an invisible join at the end if you want to fast forward to that free. You will definitely want to make an invisible join. One, because it looks nice and neat, and two, because it keeps your stitches uh, even. So you have the same number of stitches to work into when you're joining your granny squares. All right, make sure I'm counting. That was my corner, so there's my first Double crochet one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Eight. Nine. 
10. I do like to hold on to the bottom of my stitch. Doesn't get crazy. And 11. Should be at a corner. I am. Hallelujah. And you make your corner stitch, which is two. Double crochet. A chain two. And two double crochet. On to our next side. Should have eleven. One, two. Hang on. <laughs> Three. Sometimes I'm looking at my camera here to make sure I'm still in frame, and then I have a little trouble making my stitches. All right, I need to go back and count. That was my corner. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Yay! And our corner. It's very repetitive. Two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. One, two, three, four. Move my camera a little bit. Sorry, getting out of range here. Five, <laughs> Ten and eleven. All right, back to our corner, and this is our last side of this round. One, two, chain two, one, two. Okay, you've got your corner. See how they all line up? I really like making this. It's a different kind of granny square. I like them all. I find this one to be the easiest. One, two, three, four. Five. My yarn keeps tightening up on me. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. And remember, you're working into the top of 
your last double crochet there. So that's 11. Oops. And make sure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Make sure that you make your double crochet to complete that first corner. Go into the corner. Double crochet. Let's join up with your third chain. Not this one, not this one, this one. Let's pull that yarn through. Slip stitch. Go into your corner with your second slip stitch. Always remember that one. And chain four. One, two, three, and four. All right, let's see. How big is it now? All right, it's just a little over eight inches. Somewhere in the eight inch range would be what you would expect with a 10 inch hook or 10 millimeter hook, sorry, and uh, six weight yarn. This is going to be my last round for the blanket I'm making because I'm making 10 inch squares or approximately 10 inch squares. Okay. Let's get you down closer again. All right. We're going to make our two double crochet to complete this partial corner. There's our first. Now we had 11 double crochet in the last round. You add four for each because you've added two more double crochets in each corner. So 11 plus four is 15. That's how many we should have now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, Fourteen, fifteen. Okay. I am going to save you from having to listen to me the whole time. I'm going to come around and finish all my corners and my 15 double crochets on each side. And I'll join you when we're back at this original corner. All right. I have finished my fifth round. One, two, three, four, five. I have 15 double crochets all the way around and then two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet in each corner. So I'm back to the first corner. This is where you can quite often forget it when you're on your last round to go back and make this first double crochet of your initial corner. I've done it. I'm so anxious to finish that I just want to join that chain. All right. And we're going to do an invisible join. So 
So let's find our third. I'm going to use my small hook. Not the double crochet, not the fourth chain, but the third chain. Pull it on through. Whoops. We're only going to do one slip stitch. So you've completed your last corner. Leave yourself a bit of a tail to work with. All right, let's get down closer here. Pull that through. Get your needle. Wow, I do not like seeing my hands that close up, <laughs> but I want you to see the stitch, so I'll suffer through it. All right, here's where your yarn is coming out of that stitch. Here's your next stitch. You want to skip this stitch. We're going to come back and duplicate this and it's going to be seamless. So go into the next stitch, the front and the back loop. Go through those. Just do it nice and slow. This is what we're going to be duplicating. All right. That's the first part of that stitch. Now, we're going to go right back into here, right in the middle. And pull this yarn around. Right in the middle of that. Go ahead and catch this other, the back loop there. And one of the stitches back here. Pull it through slowly, very slowly. You want to make sure that you're just kind of duplicating that stitch. Should be fairly equal to the others. Now it's a nice neat join. You don't have a knot and you have the same number of stitches so that when you go to join your other granny squares it's just going to match up perfectly. And then you can come back here and weave in your end. Usually I just tunnel through Remember not to pull it too tight because you want to leave that stitch equal to the others. I'm kind of working upside down here. <laughs> Just tunnel through again, however you normally like to weave in your ends. I like to go over. If I go under again, it's just going to pull out. Two or three times, four if you want to. Just feel it, make sure it's not too hard. Just feels nice and soft still. You don't want any hard bumps when you are crocheting. You want everything to be nice and soft. Pull it through a little bit. I will caution you, it's better to come up here and <laughs> cut it and leave a little, uh, a little bit much than to come too close. You do not want to cut into your crochet stitch because it will fall apart and then you'll be sad. Okay, okay, let's see how, how big is our square now. All right, right at 10 inches. Yay! All right, if you want to keep going, it, it grows with this weight of yarn and a 10 millimeter hook by about two inches with each round. You can go as big as you like, but I'm going to make a blanket with 10 inch squares. I hope this helped you. I hope you make something with these. If so, let me know in the comments. If you give me a thumbs up, I would love it. And any feedback is very welcome. I have lots of free patterns now, mostly blankets, on my website at 
dot i dash crochet dot com i'll leave a link for this one and i'll leave links for the yarn that i used in the uh, on this and in the blanket the bernat forever fleece really and truly my favorite yarn all right thanks for watching all right i decided to go with a zigzag join and I'm going vertically and then I'll come back and join them horizontally. Don't worry, this is loose here because when you come back and join horizontally, it's going to straighten itself up. I tied all the corners together because I was afraid I'd mess up my pattern if I didn't keep it together. You don't have to do that. You can just uh, join them individually and to make it easier on myself i folded i was working with this on the dining room table i just folded the edges in and then folded also from the top down uh, to make it a little easier to work with we're going to be working now on this row, this vertical row, and just as I get to each new square, I'll take off my little yarn join. Okay, I'm going to fold it down from the top, so it's just going to make it a little bit easier for me. So I can access. just keep pulling it down towards me as I need to. I said I was doing this on the, at the dining room table and sitting down and that worked out just fine. So I want to show you how to do the zigzag join that I decided to use. It's so cute. Like I said, I went down to an eight millimeter. I tried different sizes and this one seemed to work the best. It also looks very nice on the back. It's like just a little minimal zigzag on the back. I chose to go with the matcha. You can use any color you like. I tried white, but it was just such a stark difference. It just wasn't the look I was going for, but you might like it. All right. We're going to start with a slip knot. We're going to start our join with a slip knot. Now on each corner, what I found helpful to find the corner, there is a stitch below the corner and a stitch above the corner. So this is my corner stitch. And I'm not going through the whole stitch. I'm going through these bottom, the bottom loops that are closest to the center. You're always going to be going from the top down in each stitch and you're always going to be carrying your working yarn up here behind your hook. So we're actually going down into there, but I'm just going to pull this through. I'm going to count that as a stitch. Find my next corner. There's a stitch above it. There's a stitch below it. That's my corner, and we're just going to go in that bottom most stitch from the top down. And we'll weave that tail in later. Just make sure your yarn stays behind the hook. And now just pull that through. It's just a slip stitch. It takes a little while to see the zigzag. Go to your next, just the bottom loop from top to bottom. Grab that yarn, bring it through, and bring it through. It's just a slip stitch. Find your next stitch over here. Go from the top to the bottom. Make sure to keep that working yarn behind you. Pull through. It helps if you just kind of hold on to that stitch on the right hand side, I found. 
and you're done with that one. Move over to the next stitch, go down, bring your yarn through. The stitches on the left side for me were easier. Find your next stitch, go down from the top, bring your yarn through. Next, go down. Like I said, if you hold on to this stitch, it helps. And we'll see our zigzag forming. This is going to be woven in later. So that's your very bottom. But you see how the zigzag is forming? It's so cute. If you do it in white, it kind of looks like the icing on a gingerbread cookie, which is really cute if you do it in a kind of a taupe color. If you lose which stitch you were on, just pull it over and like, okay, that's the one I went into last. Here's my next stitch. It gets really easy. So pull that over. I do have trouble with that left side or the right side rather. And you're just going to do this all the way up. And I will meet you when we're ready to join the next two squares. All right, I'm just about up to where I'm going to join with the next set of squares. And the way that I have this rolled, like I said, you can just keep pulling it down. Not going to hurt anything. Stretch it. Just pull it down. As you can see where I joined... Ah, there we are with the green. It's not going to show up a whole lot um, on the green side, but that's okay. But the the way that I went, let's get that in the light. Ah, uh, in that bottom part of the stitch, it ends up leaving this line on either side. Which just leaves you kind of a nice little border. You can go in the full stitch if you want to. I don't think it looks as good. All right, we're getting ready to join up with the next one. I can take my little corner marker off. You can use stitch markers if you want. You don't have to do that at all if you don't want to. All right, we're going to continue. I like to end on the left side. I'm not ready yet. This will be my last stitch. There's one after it. There's one before it. There's that corner stitch. So that's going to be my last stitch. We're joining these two. Now, because I ended on the left, I'm going to start on the right over here. And again with your corner. There's a stitch above the corner. There's a stitch below the corner. So I'm going to go into this one, that bottom part of the stitch going from the top down. Making sure that my working yarn is behind me. It's okay if this part is a little bit loosey-goosey. It doesn't matter because when you come across with the horizontal join, it's going to tighten it up. So the same thing over here. There's a stitch below the corner. There's a stitch above the corner. That is our corner. Go down from the top. Get that working yarn behind you and just join. I'm just show you a couple of stitches. This is all you're going to do all the way up and just keep bringing your squares on as you go. You're going to have a little bit of a gap there. You're supposed to. It's okay. So keep doing that. Just keep pulling it down as you go, if this is the way you choose to do it, or just do your individual squares. You can do that, and if you are afraid you'll lose your pattern, take a picture of the pattern. Uh, just find each individual square as you go. This seems a little cumbersome, but for me it worked out really well. All right. So... Do all your verticals, just continue across, and then we're just going to do the exact same thing. 
uh, you can turn your work or just move yourself over. I do like to work uh, going vertically with this particular stitch. And that's going to be it for the join. If you have any questions, um, you can ask in the comment section and I'll get back to you. I check it pretty frequently. And I'll join you when I'm finished with all my joins <laughs> and start working on the border. All right, I'm on my last row of joining the squares. I've done all my vertical rows. And now I'm doing all my horizontal rows, the shorter uh, part of the blanket. I say horizontal, but I'm working vertically because this join works really well moving vertically. I just wanted to show you a few things that I learned. One, if it works best if you hold it, I mean, right centered in front of you. two when i was having a lot of trouble with my stitch on the right side coming through i found if i either pull it up like this or flip it this way and then back then i didn't have to pull that stitch out also it's very easy to miss a stitch on the right side so pull your work forward to make sure that you don't miss a stitch over there. Okay, I'm just going to work up to where we cross over to start uh, joining the next two squares. See how easy it would be to miss that? Now, when you get to the corner, you're going to share the corner with the other stitches that you've already made in your previous join. You're going to join here, pull it go all the way across over, I'll show you again. That's going to come all the way across. You're bridging that row of join. You give this a little bit of a loose stitch. Now you're coming over here, joining at that corner. If you join and it looks just way too loose when you um, come back and do your next stitch, this one should be okay. But if it does look too loose, just come back and Instead of going into just that stitch, find another stitch to help you along. And that will prevent you from having that gap there. I think this one's going to be all right. Sometimes you have to go ahead and go up a couple of stitches before you figure that out. Okay, and we're just going to go over here. Be very easy to miss that stitch. So the stitch on the right is the one that you need to really be looking for. Now, I'm going to go back and see, see how I think that looks. There's a little bit of a gap here, but overall, I think it'd be fine. If I wanted to, I could go back and uh, come into both of the loops instead of just the back loop there. Now, another thing is just make sure you have your corners. There, there would be five of those in each square coming out from the center. So one, two, three, four, five. And where you join, they should be fairly equally distanced. 
Okay, so just continue when you get to the top, just fasten it off by making a chain one, cut your yarn and pull it through, pull it tight. We're going to weave those in, ends in later or work them along when we make our border. So I'll see you when we're ready to make the border. All right, I'm ready to make the border for our chunky patchwork blanket. I'm using different colors here because I'm just making a sample size. This is jasmine and this is uh, rose hip, which I did use in the blanket, but those look pretty together too. So you're just going to come into any stitch, doesn't matter, as long as you make sure you go in the back loop. Join however you like to join. I like to join with a slip knot. And then we're just going to slip stitch through there. Chain one. And you're going to go into that very same stitch. Just drop that tail. Come around behind and come from the back of the next stitch. Pull your yarn through, pull your three loops up. Now we're going to do the same thing. Go into that same stitch. Come from behind in the next stitch. Pull through. Make sure you pull your loop up nice and high. And come through all three loops for your half double crochet. And the reason I'm doing a half double crochet for the first round of the border uh, is just to give it some height before I do my twisted single crochet. The twisted single crochet to me just looks a lot like the zigzag join so it made sense to do that but this looks really nice as well you can stop uh, when you have one row of half double crochet or you could do another row all right we're at the corner now same thing go into the same stitch you, you just came out of make sure you keep doing that go behind the next one really pull those loops up high especially in the corner so it doesn't uh, pull in on you. Go into that same loop. Come from back. Just make sure you're always in the back loop only. Pull it up. Because it's going to be coming around the corner. All right, same thing. Go in that same stitch. Come from behind in the next stitch. Pull it up high. When I get past the corner, I'm going to show you how cute it is in the back. And that's why I'm doing it this way. You don't have to. You can just go into the whole stitch if you like. But I think you're going to like how it looks. Let's do one more. And this is what you're going to do all the way around until you get back to the beginning and we'll join with a slip stitch. Now let me show you how cute this is from the back. Ta-da! Isn't that cute? So that makes it look nice from the front and the back. And the back of your squares just look a little bit different. They're a little bit puffier. So continue this all the way around and I will join you when we get right back to that first stitch. I do stitch. want to point out when you get to one of your zigzag joins, I don't have one on my sample, you want to continue just into the corner before the zigzag join. Just make sure you have a nice even piece. And then when you go into this stitch, you're going to go behind your join and into the beginning of the corner of your next square. I hope that makes sense to you. It will when you're making this, I hope. All right. 
can continue. All right. I have made it back to my first stitch. Um, I told you the wrong color. This is not jasmine, it's juniper, which I should have known. It's about the color of a juniper berry. All right, so here's my last stitch coming through. Pull up, come through all three loops, and just join with a slip stitch. Chain one. We're going to come right into that same stitch again. As I said, it looks cute. You can stretch it just a little bit if you need to at the corners. It looks cute as is. I just wanted to add a little pizzazz to it. Love the back. Now I'll show you the twisted single crochet. You can also do this um, by doing the reverse single crochet. I find this easier and it looks the same. I'm going to come in here, have that chain a little bit loose, pull through, pull stitch, sorry, let's see, let me do that again in case I wasn't in camera view, come through that very same stitch, pull through, pull it up, because you're going to twist it now, counterclockwise. Clockwise would be this way, so counterclockwise is this way, going left to right. Keep it on the hook, and hopefully it's loose enough to pull your yarn through. Should be. Ta da! You're going to make those all the way around. <laughs> Don't yarn over. Once I've made a whole border, or several stitches of one stitch. It's hard for my brain to start another stitch. All right, go into that full stitch, pull through, pull it up because we're going to be twisting it. Get it loose and pull through. And this is what you're going to do all the way around. couple of times I dropped my stitch. It's no big deal. Just go back and do it again. Next stitch. Pull it up. Oops, see I just dropped my stitch. <laughs> I'm looking at the camera or the screen. Let's see. Go through the next stitch. Pull it up nice and loose. It goes a lot faster when I'm actually looking at it, but then I tend to go off screen. Nice and loose in the corners. Pull it up. Oops, trying to do that again. <laughs> Come on, brain. My muscle memory is trying to recreate the half double crochet. Pull it up, twist, pull through. Pull it up, twist, pull through. Isn't that cute? And it does end up looking a little zigzaggy, which is what I wanted. I wanted it to be fairly simple but still have some of that texture and interest that the zigzag join has so just go all the way around your blanket just like that and when you get back to this very first stitch i found that if i kind of hang on, when i wanted to join if i went into this stitch and behind that helped because that kept that twist, that stitch full. So come through with this uh, slip stitch, chain one, cut your yarn, pull it tight, fasten off, and that's your border.
And this is how it looks from the back. See how some of that zigzag. Cute, cute, cute. Let me know if you like it. If you feel like giving me a thumbs up, that'd be great. If you want to leave a comment, if you have any questions. I appreciate uh, all the feedback. If you have subscribed, thank you very much. If you haven't, I would hope you would subscribe so you'll find all the uh, free patterns. They're also at, on my website. They're all free. www.i-crochet.com Thanks for watching. I'm really happy with the way the border came out. I think it enhances the blanket. It's not too much. It looks really good from the front and the back. I think this really does look like a patchwork quilt. It reminds me of one I had when I was younger. I hope you enjoy it.